I may, it's just a maybe, be swayed to do this for other weapons. However, it is a lot of work. And it was also something I really, really did not enjoy doing. That being said, some of you may recall that not too long ago I used this which shows the DPS ratings of all weapons at base. All I've done is I've added the 15% weapon damage and if they're able to have damage to targets out of cover on them I have put them on as well and a lot of people were unimpressed by this because their precious eagle bearer and bighorn etc etc were at the bottom and how dare capacitor do more than eagle bearer and then i had one person say that it's completely wrong because of the weapon attachments etc etc and eagle bearer is actually a top tier weapon and damage talents don't actually count for that much in the grand scheme of things oh, the amount of messages i got about that comment was just unreal so, using this build as a template, Providence Defense Mask, Crit Chance, Crit Damage. Mods did change depending on the weapon being used, but the Gift Backpack, Sacrifice Chest, Grupo Gloves, Dodd City Holster and Fox's Prayer Knees. I did my best to keep things at 60% Crit Chance and trying to get as much critical hit damage as possible by swapping around mods, but exotics are a problem. And what I came up with is a mess just in case you think I'm lying about how messy it is ta-da yeah I, I hate myself for this I've been staring at it for near enough eight hours straight and I'm pretty sure I have like eye cancer or something what that is is utilizing the previous build that I just put on screen I went through every AR FAMAS F2000 TKB 408 Honey Badger M4 CTAR AKM Carbine 7 FAL G36 SIG 556 AKM Military and Black Market PDR P416 Org ACR MK16, Bighorn, Bighorn with its buff maxed out, Capacitor, Eagle Bearer, Chameleon, and Chameleon with its buff maxed out. I then did it all again, but this time with FAMAS through to MK16. I added in Killer. Pretty self standard, easy to calculate. 40% critical hit damage weapon talent the original calculations no talent was involved and I did this because yet again another person well it's actually the same person said that because honey badger is missing one mod slot it actually falls to the bottom tier in AR DPS <sighs> So, utilizing this monstrosity, and I am hoping it shows, depending on what screen you're looking on, whether it's your a computer or a mobile, but where it says CHD, critical damage, you might notice some are highlighted. For me, it's neon pink. I'm beyond colorblind. But those ones that are neon pink are the weapons that are missing a mod slot. This would be the F2000, the Honey Badger, the AKM, and the PDR. All of these weapons are still at 60% critical hit chance, despite the fact that this person also laughed at me saying he uses critical hit damage mods. Well, a lot of people, because if you're at 55% crit chance, it's better to put a mod in that only gives 5% crit chance than to actually put a gear mod in that gives you 6, because now you're wasting 1%. Like, I don't know, just basic math just delude this person or something. Anyway, I digress. So I went through and calculated the DPS of every single one of these ARs. One, to show with the build I'm using, I did calculate it with about three different other builds as well, but this one sort of seemed to be the best on average. 
Um, the only difference would be if I used a Fenris holster, um, but the overall result of that went was that nothing actually changed, everything just stayed in the order it was. So you can get different results depending on your build. Different things will fluctuate slightly depending on how you things have laid out, but I found that utilizing this build here, it's one of the main reasons I actually use it for a lot of my testing, was just a pretty decent standard baseline to go off of. For now we're not going to worry about the exotics, but the order of DPS is this. So FAMAS, F2000, TKB, Honey Badger, Police M4, CTAR, AKM, Carbine 7, FAL, G36, SIG, AKM Military and Black Market, PDR, P416, ORG, ACR and MK16. Now as soon as I added a build to them, this is what I found. It went FAMAS, TKB, F2000, those two swap places. Honey Badger stays squarely where it is, although the Police M4 does close in. CTAR, Carbine 7 and FAL move up two each and the AKM drops down below. G36, SIG, AKM, the P416 and the PDR have swapped places, although there's like 0.3% difference between them. ORG, ACR, M16. The missing mod slot doesn't actually make that much of a difference. This is not to say that it doesn't actually make a difference at all. It clearly does. For example, with the Honey Badger and the Police M4, for example, at base there is a clear 1% difference in their DPS. However, once you add a build in, this closes in to less than half a percent. But, unlike what this person suggested, it doesn't actually drop its DPS position and it certainly isn't the bottom half of the DPS. It's still quite easily one of the top DPS competitors. Right, time to add exotics into the mix. Now, as you can see, Chameleon, Eagle Bear, Capacitor fill up the bottom of three. Then we've got MK16, ACR and Bighorn. So essentially, at base, Bighorn, Capacitor, Eagle Bear and Chameleon are technically some of the worst ARs in the game. People weren't happy with this. However, I kind of have some good news for you, but then it quickly goes away again. Because there's a little bit more to this, because as the previous person that is not being named due to my breadth of mercy um had actually said is that weapon attachments are a thing well, yes but the only way to actually calculate that is then to go into a full build so here we go again so as you can see we got famas on top chameleon on bottom and this is split as you can see big in big horn and chameleon are up top but they're written in green this is to show that their buffs are at max. So Bighorn with max buff will give you, will be the highest DPS AR. Chameleon with max buff will be the second highest DPS AR. And then it's Bighorn without the buff, Famas, Capacitor, surprise contender with the buffs. Just because Capacitor has like 30% critical hit damage at base, and it actually ended up being the highest critical hit damage with the build I was running at like 189%. It was kind of hilarious and ridiculous. That being said, before people get too excited, I wish to remind you that aforementioned person also said, which is it's just another thing we've got to test really when they people say things like this, damage talents don't actually give you that much. All right, okay, that's going to add killer to everything that we can use killer on. Well, this is interesting because Eagle Bear has just fucking vanished to the bottom again. Right, so Bighorn coming in top when its buff is at max. Chameleon second with its buff at max. Famas with killer. TKB with killer. F2000 with killer. Bighorn with no buffs. Honey Badger with killer. M4 with killer. CTAR with killer. FAL with killer. Carbine 7 with killer. AKM with killer, G36, SIG, point, SIG 556, AKM military black market, PDR, sorry, P416, PDR, 
the hidden contender capacitor org acr mk16 eagle bearer chameleon with no buffs yeah damage talents don't make that much of a difference eagle bearer is back, back at bottom despite the fact that this person said it's a top tier contender for famas where Remember, no matter what you do to one weapon, you'll have to even it out and utilize it on the exact same build with every weapon. This does actually mean that for this, ch Chameleon was at like 68% critical hit chance. Just because if I then started mixing around more pieces and gave it more multipliers, it would have been a completely unfair test. However, there is one more thing that we actually now need to look into. That would be buff uptime as well as accuracy rates. And for those that actually know a little bit about the weapons and the scaling in this game, you're probably now looking at Bighorn and Chameleon going, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be funny. Because one thing that maybe some of you haven't actually caught on to is the DPS that I'm showing here is at maximum potential. This is assuming that if it's they're all at 60% crit chance this is assuming that 60% of our bullets will crit on a headshot so this is like maximum potential dps if you're getting over this that means you're getting more than 60% of your headshots actually critting so then i pose to you what is the actual chances of you getting and maintaining on a build like this that stupid friggin buff that Bighorn has where you're able to consistently able to hit headshots at like I don't know let's just say something quite menial for most ARs 15 to 20 meters yeah with Bighorn it ain't happening it's also not happening with Chameleon so yeah this is accounting for 100% hit percentage no bullets miss. Every bullet will hit the head and 60% of your bullets will crit. Yep. So, obviously, if we then start counting, calculating in hit percentage as well as your damage talent uptime. Now, I don't know about a lot of other people, but typically speaking, if you're running Keller, solo, but counting for all of them being in solo so you have maximum potential to keep your damage talents up. Killer obviously doesn't start active, but once you do have it active, getting a kill with a crit will activate Killer. And then from there, there's your damage buff. And all you've got to do is keep killing things. With something like a Famas, it's pretty damn easy because of the rate of fire. It's up for like 10 seconds and you've got a magazine that can be dumped in 3.3 seconds. End result of this is technically especially in solo, you have no excuse not to have killer up 100% of the time. That being said, in group play, it does go a little bit south. This is also one of the reasons why killer is considered to be suboptimal because it is RNG based. You cannot guarantee it will be there. In solo play, as long as you play aggressive and you keep shooting stuff, it should be there pretty much 100% of the time. But just to play it safe, we've calculated it here at active for 90% of the time. And then depending on the weapon, which I will go through now, your hit percentage will change. Now, this is the only part that is going to be sort of conditional to me because I am going to be at a different accuracy level to different people with different weapons. For example, I know a lot of people that are beyond accurate with famas and very rarely actually miss a shot however with a famas i'm pretty i would argue pretty terrible but i'm a lot more accurate with an f2000 so for a famas i found that about out of two magazines so 100 bullets 95 of them hit make it nice and easy 95 percent accuracy with an f2000 i only missed two bullets that uh, goes to show practice makes perfect right with the honey badger i missed six that's 94 percent accuracy with a cetar 95 with a carbine 7 96 with a tkb 
91. With a Chameleon, 88. With a ACR, 98. With an FAL, 90. With the MK16, 97. With the Police M4, 88. With the P416, 91. With the Bighorn, 74. Just letting that sink in for a minute. PDR, 87. Capacitor, 88. Eagle Bearer. I actually didn't test this because I do not own an Eagle Bearer. I went to my friend, Unknown Spot, who is probably the only person I know that has soloed a legendary mission with the Eagle Bearer and was beyond proud of it. He is absolutely in love with this weapon. Hopefully, if he sees this, he will comment and say, yes, this is me. He said that on a normal day, he's between 75 and 80% accurate with it. However, on a good day, where he's been possessed by the spirit of Luna, he can get up to about 90% accuracy with it. So I went with 90% accuracy. With the SIG, 82%. With the AKM, 80%. With the AKM Black Market, basically the same. I also went with 80%. Didn't actually test it, but if you're hitting 80 with an AKM, you're hitting 80 with an AKM Black Market. The handling is the same. With the G36, 78. And with the Org, also 70 Eight. What this looks like in comparison when you actually calculate DPS through this is quite simply this. Again, this will be subject to change depending on how accurate you are with these weapons. This is just in particular to me. But another thing you need to worry about is the uptime on your weapon talent. I can tell you now that Bighorn will not have 100% uptime on its talent. Just simply because the accuracy for it is not there. Eagle Bearer doesn't even have a damage talent, so that's not going to go that far. Neither does Capacitor, so that's going to be about as far as that gets. The only outlier is Chameleon, and that's simply just because when Chameleon has its two main buffs active, the one for 90% weapon damage and like 50% crit damage, it hits stupid hard. Despite the fact that it might have a pretty low, well, to mid to low, uptime you're actually able to hit consistently pretty damn hard with it the only issue is when you don't have the talents up the damage talents up it drops massively it's not like it just drops a little bit it hits rock bottom and then goes underneath the friggin bar it's kind of the same with bighorn just because of its accuracy it's not a very accurate weapon and it is because of that accuracy where you, the only way to really compensate for it is putting weapon handling rolls on your build, which therefore then means you sacrifice damage, which is its overall maximum potential. It's sad to say, just generally really not worth it. Now, just because I know someone's going to go, ah, oh, but I'm like 100% accurate with Bighorn, that means I'm like 11.4 million DPS. No! Even if you are 100% accurate, this has just taken over two enemies. But the average DPS with FAMAS, first magazine, no killer is active. Second magazine, killer is active. Average DPS is 9.5 mil. Working it down, just assuming you are working at 100% accuracy. Chameleon doesn't even get his full buff up, so from there it's just struggling to even catch up with the remainder of the other weapons. Bighorn, granted, does actually hit hard and have some pretty impressive DPS. However, despite the fact that I've said that this is for 100% accuracy, um, if you show me someone that thinks they have 100% accuracy with Bighorn, I'll show you a fucking idiot. Like, it's just not going to happen. I mean, with my test of Bighorn, I was barely, like, maybe even 60% accurate. I had to get a friend in who was a lot more accurate and had better control over these weapons than I am. And he then rated his accuracy. Along with the fact that it has a rather annoying reload, plus only a 40% magazine, when you then start going into sustain calculations, 
yeah, the entire thing just falls apart really fucking quick for any argument for pretty much any of the exotic ARs. The only one that is actually an outlier is Capacitor, just because you would typically have it on a skill build. Even on a DPS build, it actually performs, outperforms Chameleon and Eagle Bearer. Like, yeah. Weapon attachments, as they are important, but they're not actually as important as a lot of people think. You can be missing one on, like, the F2000, Honey Badger, PDR, the AKM, and it's not going to make a large enough difference for the overarching DPS traits that a lot of these weapons actually have. For the exotic weapons, the only real outlier is Capacitor. Simply just because it actually has on it, at base, 10% critical hit damage. Sorry, critical hit chance. 30% critical hit damage. And it's got damage to armor on it, which will help you out against pretty much all and every enemy. And if they don't have armor, damage to health takes over. But then every AR has damage to health on. Eagle Bearer has 10% headshot damage. This will only help you when you're hitting headshots. And it's... Despite what some people say, think, or believe, it's actually not that much of an accurate weapon. And even with like the, the talent on it where it increases your accuracy the longer you're firing, doesn't actually give you that much accuracy. It's still not a very accurate weapon. Bighorn is actually probably the least accurate AR. I actually think it is the least accurate AR in the game and yet it's got a talent that relies solely on headshots so you actually being able to utilize and maintain this consistently is it's just not happening does it work can it come into effect can you hit headshots with it yes you can but tell me this what are you more likely to hit headshots with a famas or a bighorn and being that the famas has the highest stable we'll call it stable just at base stable dps what would you rather go for headshots for like if if you're saying bighorn at this point then i can't help you like it's just not going to happen multipliers are a huge thing it's why we put damage to targets out of cover on a lot of our weapons our attachments are a utility tool for our builds at large yes they help Yes, they're useful, but if you're missing one, it's not really that much of a big deal. And damage talents are actually worth quite a lot. On average, killer is about is like 10.3% increase in DPS. It's literally all it took to swap up the DPS tracking that I've done. 10.3% more DPS. Something like Strained is capable of giving you near enough 15% increase in DPS. So imagine what would happen if I used Strained. If we were doing sustained damage and I used Fast Hands, none of the exotic weapons would even be on the frigging list. Except actually maybe Chameleon because of its leg buff thing. Maybe. The talents are worth more than a lot of people actually think. They are not even either. Like just like the difference between strained and killer is about five percent. Along with the fact that for killer you need to get a kill in the first place. And that kill needs to be with a crit. So it's RNG as to whether you even get it or not. Strained is basically always active. Sure it ramps up and the longer you're firing, the more damage you'll actually do. And it does work better on slower fire rate weapons just because you have longer time at maximum buff. But the overall effect of it, because it's always going to be active, is going to be huge. And this will give you a larger increment in your DPS than what Killer can. It then also depends on where that damage talent is being applied. We essentially have three sets of Weapon talents. We have weapon talents that are applied in the all weapon damage area, which is there. Hopefully you can see that arrow. Typically, weapon talents that are applied here are generally weaker because they just add to everything else around them. But weapon talents that are applied here 
are a completely separate multiplier that will typically add to that individual multiplier which then has a lot more multipliers around them to help bolster them. Hopefully what will put this into perspective is again just utilizing a very similar build which we've all seen before. It's just my standard build with a FAMAS that I've used pretty much as the example throughout all of this video. And all I've done for the top build, you might notice that AWD or weapon damage is at 1.3. So all I've done is add 30% into there. That means that our body crit is going to be 580,014 and our head crit is going to be 803,958. You can see the DPS is on the right hand side. Body is going to be 6.5 mil, head is going to be 9.9 mil. However, for the build below it, you might notice all weapon damage is at 1, but total weapon damage has got another 30 added to it. So total weapon damage is now 55. Our body crits are now 625,920, and our headshots are 867,587. This is, across the board, 7.91% increase in total DPS. We have talents that affect your all weapon damage and we have talents that affect your total weapon damage. So for anyone thinking that there's not a lot of difference between some talents and others, there is actually a huge difference. Obviously it's going to be build dependent, but just on this one, depending on when that 30% goes. Yeah, by the way, the talent I've used in this has been completely made up because there's not really a talent that gives you a flat 30% increase in all weapon damage and then another one that gives you a flat 30% increase in total weapon damage. It's just an example. There can be a huge difference in DPS talents. There can be. It's not always true, just because strained goes into the second half of where it will actually get incorporated into the rest of of the multipliers where Optimus gets incorporated into the first half with the rest of the all weapon damage. But due to the fact that Optimus is scaling per bullet for some bizarre reason it's outperforming strained. Further testing is being done on this but if it does turn out the way I'm thinking it is, um, I'm calling it I've found the new meta go me i've got my hands in the air right now waving around like i just don't care optimist is gonna be probably the go-to weapon talent just because of how it's scaling at the moment it's most likely a bug it's not meant to be happening this way i only really noticed it as occurring in this manner since tu15 just don't tell anyone don't know why i'm making it in a public youtube video then but heh what a thousand people will watch this a thousand people will be in the know yeah anyway this video has been damn long, probably the longest video I've actually ever made and I've probably never talked for so long in my entire life. Right now all my clan mates are looking at me going, mate you never shut up in Discord, what the fuck are you on about? So yeah, hopefully this clarifies a few things and for those that have read the idiots comments that have been uh, going around, hopefully we can, uh, this disproves him because like, the amount of dumb that this person has been saying on repeat. And I've just been ignoring him, but yesterday it just sort of boiled over just because the absolute lunacy that was coming out kind of broke me and I had to say something. And now he's got an entire like 30 minute video all to himself. Bloody mongoloid. Anyway, hopefully that clears it up. Hopefully this solves the issue as to why some ARs are considered top tier and one some aren't. This isn't to detract from people saying XYZ weapon is good on XYZ build. I am sure it is. My point is there are just always better options and typically at the moment the way it stands your better options are FAMAS, TKB, F2000, Honey Badger. Pretty much in that order depending on the actual build. But yeah anyway have fun. Good luck don't die sorry for the 30 minute video it's probably also bad for your health toodles